Hi folks, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, this video is going to be um, about vitamin E. Um, I've done videos on vitamin E before. Um, I wanted to do a video in particular on vitamin E and the differences between tocopherols and tocotrienols and I also wanted to give some advice on why it's a good idea not to take very high amounts of alpha tocopherol. Um, the chemistry of vitamin E is very complex and um, I don't think it needs to be fully understood to understand the basic concept of, of why you need to eat a variety of different forms of vitamin E. So I'll try and keep this as non-technical as possible to make it as understandable um, f for the people who don't have the chemistry um, to be able to understand the structures. Basically, there are eight forms of vitamin E and all of those forms of vitamin E have the same activity as the main form, which is alpha tocopherol. Now, the eight forms are made up of alpha, beta, gamma and delta tocopherol and alpha, beta and gamma delta and delta tocotrienol. So they're the eight. There's four tocopherols, there's four tocotrienols. Every single one of those chemicals is slightly different. They have their own structures, but they all have the activity in the body. They all do the same, the, the, well, they all have the ability to do the same thing as alpha tocopherol, which is the standard upon which they are uh, classified as vitamin E. They all have slightly different effects in the body, but generally they stop you getting a vitamin E deficiency. That's the definition of a, of a, of a compound that fits into the family of vitamin E. If it stops you getting the known deficiency disease, vitamin E, which is uh, characterized by lipid peroxidation in the cell membranes, then that is classed as um, being um, a form of vitamin E. So like I say, there's eight, eight different structures. Now, they are slightly chemically different. There are um, four toco there are four tocopherols, there are four tocotrienols. The tocotrienols have, uh, well, all of the chemicals have a chrominol head, and they have an isoprenoid tail. So just think they have a head, you see that, and then a little tail. And that's basically the structure. The difference between the tocopherols and the tocotrienols is that the isoprenoid tail is unsaturated in tocotrienols. Now that may give them different properties in the body. Um, so what we want nutritionally from, from the evidence that we have, what we want is a mixture of tocopherols and tocotrienols in our tissues because they have the same vitamin E activity but they are chemically different and therefore they may have slightly different effects. So we don't want to miss out on any of the different chemicals in order to be able to maximize our um, vitamin E uh, status. And in particular, we want to get a balance between the tocopherols and the tocotrienols, if possible. Now, if we look at foods, foods do generally contain different amounts and different types of vitamin E. The most common form of uh, vitamin E in food is it are, well, it's generally the alpha tocopherol and the gamma tocopherol are the two most common that you find in food. But there are mixtures of the other tocopherols in um, various uh, food. Nearly all plant foods have most of the vitamin E in them, just in various ratios. There are some plants that have much higher amounts of tocotrienols, and they tend to be things that we don't eat. So um, rice bran oil, for example, has high amounts of tocotrienols, and that's actually where the supplements of tocotrienols are actually are usually extracted from. But like I say, if you eat a very mixed diet, which contains nuts, seeds, uh, and whole plant uh, material that has um, fat in it, the plant will use the vitamin E for the same reason that we need it, which is to protect the cell membranes, protect the unsaturated fatty acids in the seeds. Uh, and obviously when we eat the seeds, we get the benefit of those, uh, of those various forms of vitamin E. Um, so that's great if you can get that in your diet, getting the best way then to reiterate what I've always said, the best way to get any vitamin is through the diet because generally nature very cleverly has packaged things in a way that work with our physiologies when we eat the plants. The problem comes when you start to look at supplements because there is quite a lot of evidence that it's actually quite difficult to get vitamin E in optimal amounts in the diet. Uh, this very contentious issue as to what optimal amounts are um, but there does seem to be a benefit from supplements for certain groups of people. Um, now that doesn't mean you have to take a supplement of vitamin E. Like I say, if you have a very good diet, very high, healthy, high quality diet, you might not need to. 
but then we look at the studies and the studies show well actually yeah if you do take um vitamin e supplements there are benefits to them uh, to the to the to the consumer so it's a balance and this balance really pivots on understanding the physiology of how vitamin e is absorbed and how it's transported around the body um so what happens is when we when we eat the the fatty foods or when we eat the supplement the vitamin e goes into our uh, gastrointestinal tract and it's absorbed along with um other fats it goes through the enterocytes into the blood um and there is a there is a process to to package this vitamin e uh, it needs to go to the liver uh, and there is a um, in, in this process of, of kind of distributing the vitamin E to the liver, there is a transport protein that is required called the tocopherol transfer, uh, transfer protein. Now this tocopherol transfer protein um, is, is, is required to transport the vitamin E and get it into the liver. And then what happens is the vitamin E is transferred into uh, lipoproteins, which will uh, be in the form of the very, li very low density lipoprotein and that very low density lipoprotein is then transported and distributed to the tissues which then it ultimately comes a low, becomes a low density lipoprotein uh, and then a, and then a high density lipoprotein and then it's removed and and it excreted after the the fats have been excreted from it and they've been put into the tissues so it goes from the gut to the liver and then the liver to the tissues now the problem there is is that the tocopherol transfer protein has a very high preference of transporting alpha tocopherol that is the preferred form of vitamin E that it likes to transfer. So if you have very high amounts of alpha tocopherol in your diet, your body will preferentially absorb the alpha tocopherol over the other forms of the vitamin E. So you can actually give yourself a deficiency of the other forms of vitamin E by having too, too, too much alpha tocopherol in your diet. Now that's not really achievable if you eat food. Um, however, if you eat, if you consume supplements of alpha tocopherol, and this is the problem I have with many manufacturers of supplements, they manufacture vitamin E as the alpha tocopherol form in very high amounts, 400 IU, 600 IU, 1000 IU. Those are very high intakes, much higher than you'd be able to get in the diet, even with uh, eating uh, vitamin E rich foods. Uh, and what's that actually what that is actually doing is it's decreasing the, the the absorption of the other forms of vitamin E so there is evidence for example that gamma tocopherol has particular um, uses in the body the body uses gamma tocopherol for particular things if you take a supplement with very high amounts of alpha tocopherol in it you are decreasing your absorption uh, distribution tissue concentrations of gamma tocopherol and obviously there are different um, affinities of different compounds for the tocopherol transfer protein so some of them are all, some of the forms of vitamin E are always going to be less uh, favorably absorbed now this tells us something else as well it tells us that the the body actually prefers and requires higher amounts of alpha tocopherol than the other forms because the body is very clever it, it knows it knows you know it's been designed or created um, in a way that allows it to understand what it requires for absorption. Now, if you if the alpha if the tocopherol transfer protein is preferentially transferring alpha tocopherol, that should tell you that the body requires higher amounts of alpha tocopherol. And I think consuming food that that would appear to work very well. You the body contains higher amounts of alpha tocopherol in the tissues. It still absorbs the other forms of vitamin E, but in lower amounts. It uses the other forms of vitamin E for other things they are slightly different physiological um, uh, requirements for it um, and that's all in balance the problem comes when you take high amounts of alpha tocopherol um, is a supplement and and this this is I think what puts the body out of balance uh, it creates an imbalance in, in the vitamin E um, uh, um, um, isoforms in in the in the tissues and this can actually be a driver of, of certain diseases um, and this, I think, relates to some of the studies where high, people have taken high amounts of supplements of alpha tocopherol and they found that it has a pro oxidant effect. So sometimes when you take vitamin E supplements, you do actually get a detriment, you get the opposite effect of what you're trying to achieve. You want to take in the vitamin E, which is an antioxidant, it protects our cell membranes from oxidation. If you take in high amounts of alpha tocopherol, um, 
you can actually have the opposite effect and some studies have noted that um, there is a there is a propensity for some people to actually go into pro-oxidant state and actually damage their tissues and this probably relates to two things firstly all antioxidants need to be in balance so for example vitamin C um, it recycles vitamin E if you have too much vitamin E and you're using up the vitamin E but you don't have enough vitamin C you can't recycle the vitamin E back to its antioxidant state and therefore it stays in its pro-oxidant state which will actually damage the cell membranes where it is uh, accumulating so you if you take so this is this leads us to a, a number of, of kind of practical steps that we have to think about in order to be able to maximize our vitamin E um, uh, status the first thing we need to do is we need to take in all the forms of um, the vitamin E that doesn't mean we have to take in equal amounts but we need to have a diet that is more balanced as our diet would be if it was um, if we were getting our vitamin E from foods so the first thing to do is can you get enough vitamin E from your food if you eat nuts and seeds if you eat a very high quality diet you may very well be able to with other antioxidants that you take which support vitamin E you may very well be able to get enough vitamin E in your diet. If you are um, somebody who thinks they need more antioxidant, a better antioxidant status, maybe you're in, maybe you're a, an athlete, very high amounts of physical activity, maybe you're exposed to pollution, maybe you live in a polluted city. If you do, and you feel like you need to take a, a vitamin E supplement, there are, there is a number of things that you have to take into consideration. Firstly, don't take just an alpha tocopherol um, supplement. Um, and I will come back at the end of the video and talk about alpha tocopherol and alpha tocopherol and I will talk about some of the synthetic forms as well just to fill fill that gap as well but for now tocopherol is the uh, is the um, oil form of vitamin E that you get in a capsule you would actually be able to squeeze the oil out if you can squeeze the oil out of a capsule and it's oily and it, you know it's like a fat that's tocopherol um, and that will have come usually from a plant source. If that's to if that's all alpha tocopherol and you're taking it in a supplement, there's probably too much there. So you need to temper the amount of the supplements you're taking. One solution to this would be to take a, um, a supplement of mixed tocopherols. So for example, um, this is, and I don't endorse any supplements in particular. Um, I tend to move my, my purchases around. I buy different types of supplements. These are by Swanson. Um, but they are mixed tocopherols. So my vitamin E at the moment, I have i don't take too much of it. I only take 200 IU, so I try and keep the dose a little bit lower. Um, that's probably all you would need, uh, even if you are um, even if you have a high requirement for vitamin E. And I always try and get my vitamin E in the oil form, and I always try and buy it as mixed tocopherols. So this is uh, alpha tocopherol with added, mixed to uh, with added other tocopherols. But that doesn't give you any tocotrienols. So you could buy a supplement that contains all, this is a supplement by Time Health and it contains all of the tocopherols and tocotrienols from a food source. So these types of supplements are more expensive because vitamin E is quite an expensive uh, nutrient to extract and put into supplements. But if you want to take a supplement, take lower amounts of vitamin E in total and try and take a supplement that covers all of the, um, all of the tocopherols and tocotrienols. You will, always, you will always tend to find that they contain more alpha tocopherol. And like I say, that's fine because the tocopherol transfer protein preferentially, your body seems to preferentially want the alpha tocopherol anyway. But you need to give it the option that it's, you've got the other, to, the other tocopherols and the tocotrienols there as well to make up a, a mixed amount of vitamin E that you're providing to your tissues to cover all of the physiological needs. So there's two things you can look at in your supplements. Don't take too much alpha tocopherol on its own and don't take too much vitamin E on its own as a supplement. Try and try and keep the keep the uh, it's better to take it consistently at a lower level than to kind of, you know, take very high amounts of it for for particular reasons. And if you eat a healthy diet, you won't need much vitamin E as a supplement anyway. Uh, I would say absolute tops 400 IU um from a from a supplement would would would, would be be that would be you know a lot uh, I take I take 200 uh, and I don't always take it every day I take it every other day and that's the other thing about taking uh, a fat soluble vitamin you don't need to take it every day so if you got a 400 if let's say you bought a 400 IU supplement of vitamin E uh, mixed tocopherols 
and you thought, well, actually, I don't want to take 400. It can be cheaper to buy a 400 tablet and take one every three days, for example, or one every four days. The vitamin E builds up into your tissues. It stays there for a while. It's recycled by vitamin C anyway, so you don't need to take it every day. So that's one of the advantages. You can actually save money on supplements by t buying a, a higher dose tablet and then just take or a high dose capsule and then taking it less often. So that's another thing you can do. Uh, obviously you can also change the amount that you take over time you don't have to always take you know 200 IU uh, if you're um, not exercising you're in the countryside you're not exposed to pollution you might not need that much if you're going into the city um, you know if you're doing a lot of exercise if you're exposing yourself to pollutants you may need more so you can change the amount that you take that's the other th consideration to to think about um, so that's really what I wanted to talk about in this in this in this video. Why why does some studies show that vitamin E is detrimental to the health, and why um, you know what can you do practically to be able to address that? Um, the last thing I wanted to say in this video, um, it's been going on quite a while already, um, is about the different forms of vitamin E. I always try and get my vitamin E as the tocopherol version or the tocotrienol version. That all at the end signifies that the um, the um, chemical form of the of the um, of the of the of the tocopherol, uh, the vitamin E, is in its oil form. Um, that st uh, symbolizes the alcohol form. It means it's in the oil form, so it's going to be in a uh, in a capsule. If you're not sure and you're unsure about the chemistry, you want the form that you could take a capsule, bite the end off, and squeeze the oil out. That's the best form of vitamin E to take. Um, there are other forms of vitamin E that you can take um, and they are the tocopheryl form, that's YL at the end. Uh, they tend to be, for example, toc tocopheryl succinate. They will ha ha always have another chemical name at the end because what's happened there is that they've taken the vitamin E, the tocopherol, and they've bonded it to another chemical. So in the case of um, tocopheryl succinate, they've taken the tocopherol, they've but binded it, bonded it to a um, succinic acid, and they form tocopheryl succinate. You can also find tocopheryl acetate. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you tend not to get that form in mixed vitamin E. Mixed vitamin E tends to come from plant sources, and the plants will always have the tocopherol form in them. They they use the oil form. The, the, the kind of chemically bonded tocopheryl will still work as vitamin E, there is nothing wrong with that. It's just that when you tend to buy tocopheryl succinate or tocopheryl acetate, you tend to get one of the forms of vitamin E in higher amounts. So it's very unusual to get mixed tocopherols as tocopheryl succinates. You will tend to you get alpha tocopheryl succinate in a tablet on its own. However, if you buy the tocopherol, you can mix the other tocopherols in because they're in their loose form. They're not connected to anything, and therefore they're just extracted from plant seeds. Um, effectively, crush the seeds, squeeze the oil out, and collect the vitamin E. That's effectively how it's done. So that's another thing to consider. Solgar do use the tocopheryl form in their multivitamins but you can also buy tocopherol and I think mixed tocopherols from Solgar so it depends sometimes what you're buying uh, generally the forms in multivitamins because their tablets will be in the tocopheryl forms and that's because the toc when you bond the tocopherol to the succinate molecule uh, to form tocopheryl succinate it becomes a powderable basically so you can put it in a tablet so vitamin E in a tablet will usually be in the ill succinate form, um, which is nothing wrong with that. You might have vitamin E in your in your um, in your um, multivitamin, but bear in mind if you do have that, you're must you're very likely to just have the alpha tocopheryl form, and therefore it goes back to what I'm saying about this video is that you want to actually have mixed tocopherols, so you need the oil form really. Um, so that's one thing to say. The other thing to say is that there are different forms of vitamin E. There is a synthetic form and there is a, um, there is a natural form. Um, now these, this is to do with stereoisomerism. The body recognizes certain molecules, but if you flip the molecule into its mirror image, it doesn't recognize them. So for example, uh, amino acids, we have in our bodies the L forms of the amino acids, um, which 
the L stands for Levo. It rotates the, but when you put that into a, a crystallography machine, it rotates the plane polarized light to the left, hence Levo. There is also another form of amino acids called the dextro form, and that will, when you put it into a crystallography machine, it will rotate the plane polarized light to the right. Our body can't recognize the R, uh, the D amino acids, the, the dextro amino acids. It only recognizes the levo. However, with sugars, we only recognize the dextro, not the levo. So the body will select particular isomers of vitamin E to be able to use. Now, in the form of vitamin E that we find in plants, um, this is slightly the, the isomerism is more complex in vitamin E than it would be for amino acids or sugars. There are multiple forms, but effectively, what you want is the D form. You want the dextro form, um, and th this will often be on the ingredients as D uh, tocopherol. Uh, or D alpha tocopherol or D gamma tocopherol. So it's the D form that we want. That's the form that plants make. We want that in our food. If we buy a supplement, we want the same. We want the D form. So if we have a look at these supplements, um, let's have a look at Swanson. On the back, it says D alpha tocopherol and mixed tocopherol. So this is the natural form. It's been it's in oil, so it's likely to have just been extracted from plants. I don't know whether it says where it comes from. Um, soybean oil so they've taken the vitamin E out some soybean oil and they just put it into a, a capsule in this other supplement um, all of the all of the forms of vitamin E D alpha D beta D gamma D delta for both the tocopherols and the tocotrienol so these are natural forms and it does actually say they're extracted from plants and again I think they've come from um, let me see where they've come from and there's the ingredients uh, it doesn't say but they've probably taken them from something like soybean oil, soybean oil or s sunflower oil or something like that. But you can usually tell that they're plant forms when they're in the D form. The L form is a synthetic form you can make in, the chem in a chemical lab. Uh, what happens when you artificially make vitamin E through a series of enzymatic reactions in a chemistry lab is that you end up with what's called a racemic mixture, um, which is both a mixture of D and L forms. Now that is detrimental for two reasons. Firstly, uh, we can't recognize the uh, L form. So any L form you take in will just be ignored by the body. So if you take in, um, let's say 200 IU of D alpha tocopherol and you take in 200 IU of D L alpha tocopherol, on the D L to alpha tocopherol, you will only recognize about half of that because the other half is the L form that you don't recognize. So actually 200 IU of DL alpha tocopherol is actually equivalent only to 100 because you ignore the half of it which is the L form. So those mixtures, you're at, they're actually cheating you out of half of your vitamin E. So although natural form vitamin E is more expensive, you're effectively getting twice as much because all of it is absorbed and all of it is used. You absorb all of that D form and you use it and distribute it to tissues. When you absorb the same amount, or when you eat the same amount of the DL form, the L form is ignored. It's about half of the amount, and therefore you've only got 50% of the amount of vitamin E. The other problem with the synthetic form is that the L form may actually interfere with the metabolism of the D form. So you're actually getting less. The 50% the that you're absorbing of the D form is then interfered with by the L form, which doesn't have an effect, but it still interferes in the metabolism, and therefore you may actually even get less, and that may actually have a detrimental effect because you don't want to interfere with your vitamin E uh, metabolism. So that's something else to consider. You don't really want to, you want to be looking at the back of your vitamin E supplement and see, is that vitamin E? And if you want to test this, go to eBay, type in vitamin E, uh, have a look at all the supplements and most of them will, um, most of the cheaper ones, the vitamin E will be as DL alpha tocopheryl or DL alpha tocopherol. And that means you're getting, if as soon as you see DL, you know it's been made in a laboratory. You know that's a chemically synthesized racemic mixture of vitamin E that's been synthesized artificially. If you, if it's natural source or it says natural, all of those words meaningless, you want to go to the ingredients, look at the ingredients. If it says D alpha or D beta or D gamma or D uh, delta, you know it's a natural source vitamin E. It's been probably been taken from plants. Um, you want to look for the old form, the alcohol form, 
and you want to try and um, remember the test is if you can get a capsule and squeeze it open that's the that's the form that you want it's it's basically vitamin E that's come from seeds directly squeeze the seeds take the oil out so what's the take home message from this um, vitamin E is a very good obviously it's a it's a vital it's a vi it's a vital substance for our bodies we need it um, it is possible to get enough vitamin E from the diet if your diet is very 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 good um, if you feel that for example you might be on a low fat diet or you might be cutting your fat down for various reasons if you feel that you need supplements because there's not enough in your diet uh, you can take supplements but don't take too much alpha tocopherol on its own and don't take the synthetic form which is the DL form um, try and get a mixed group of um, you know the tocotrienols are very expensive so um, just taking mixed tocopherols is better than nothing but if you can get a tocopherol and tocotrienol mixture it's better to take less of it and have all of them than it is to take higher amounts of a single uh, form of vitamin E particularly alpha tocopherol which will uh, block the absorption of some of the others so there's some of the things to consider about vitamin E it's a very uh, complex but very interesting chemistry and there have been you know thousand page books that have been written on the tocopherols um, scientific books with all the studies in them they're very very interesting chemically the last thing to say about vitamin E is that you can actually increase your uh, usage of vitamin E by optimizing your vitamin C the reason for this is that uh, vitamin E accumulates in the cell membranes and its job is to prevent the lipid peroxidation in those membranes so if you've got a very high quality diet you'll have a high amounts of uh, unsaturated fats in your membranes and they'll be very susceptible to oxidation the job of vitamin E to protect you is to protect those membranes from free radical damage and it's a very good antioxidant for that it accumulates in the membranes and every time there's a, uh, a free radical tries to attack the membranes it will sacrifice itself rather than allow the membrane to be damaged now the problem with that is that once the vitamin E is turned into the vitamin E radical it becomes damaging itself it can actually da then start damaging the cell membranes itself so what happens is vitamin C steps in and recycles the vitamin E straight back into its antioxidant form in, in turn sacrificing itself but the vitamin C is not in the membrane it's only associated with it so the vitamin C itself doesn't damage the membrane now the vitamin C is then recycled back to vitamin C antioxidant from the vitamin C radical uh, by various other chemicals and this process goes around there is a I've written an article called the antioxidant merry-go-round that's on my website if you search for if you go to robertbarrington.net you search for the antioxidant merry-go-round it explains all the vitamin uh, all the various antioxidants that recycle each other and vitamin C can be recycled back to its antioxidant state by for example flavonoids which you can get from plant compounds in the in your diet so it's very very interesting but that's the other interaction that you need to bear in mind with vitamin E you can actually boost your vitamin E levels in your cells by actually taking by by taking vitamin C because the vitamin C will recycle uh, the vitamin E and it will stay for longer in the cell membranes before it's actually degraded and excreted so that's another thing that you can consider as well uh, an optimal diet with optimal amounts of vitamin C may have low amounts of vitamin E but that vitamin C may make that vitamin E more potent last for longer and therefore it may be enough um, uh, whereas without the vitamin C that would actually maybe cause a vitamin E deficiency so I, ho I hope you weren't too uh, you know confused by all of that I hope you you know you've understood the, what I'm trying to say um, as always eat well stay healthy and protect yourself and hopefully I'll see you soon for another video take care <coughs>